Welcome. You're listening to The Aligned Self, conversations in creating a conscious and abundant life. This is Daniel DeNovi. I'll be your guide and host. Let's see just where we can take this. Hello, friend, and welcome back to the conversation. You know, I was perusing Facebook, or actually I was just checking in, and up popped in my feed something that a friend of mine posted on her wall. It said this, Your ability to accept compliments is a direct reflection of your capacity to receive love. How open are you to receiving? Now, I thought this was pretty poignant since in my five-step manifesting guide, the downloadable PDF, Step number four is being open to receive. And your ability to shamelessly accept or take in a compliment is very indicative of your capacity to receive. But I thought if I just did a podcast on that one aspect, it would be shallow. And so I've created a checklist, a self-inventory, so to speak, of things that you can ask yourself And I'm not going to be able to cover them all here. I'll probably make it available as a PDF, maybe as a a companion piece to the the five-step manifesting guide. And so for the sake of this episode, I have seven things on my checklist or for you to self-inventory you for. And I'll give you the broad category and then uh, some of the questions underneath them. So first is your, are your beliefs and your mindset? What are your beliefs about receiving Do you have limits on the capacity on which you're willing to take in life? Now, all of us have limits. We have an upper limit and a lower limit on what we're willing to receive. And I've done podcast episodes on asking the question, how good can you stand it? And so the the first question really has a lot to do with capacity. How much am I willing to receive? And we all have limits. We all have I guess, let's talk about money. Let's talk about money. Let's throw out a number that you might be uncomfortable accepting. There was a guy on TV, he won a million dollars. And of course they ask, what are you going to do with your winnings? And he said, well, there's some things I want to spend some money on, but the bulk of it, the bulk of it, I'm going to give away. I'm going to give away to other deserving people. And so what that told me is that he just came into a windfall, a million dollars, and after a year, he probably wouldn't have any of it left. Because somewhere in his mind, he did not feel as if he deserved it. He wanted to give it away, give it away to other deserving people, people more deserving than me. And so we all have a limit that we're uncomfortable with. And so I've always liked to play with numbers. And so you just keep writing down bigger and bigger numbers and entertaining the idea, how would I spend a million dollars? How could I invest a million dollars? You're not allowed to give it away. You can't do it. Someone dumps a million dollars in your lap. You cannot buy anything for someone else. You cannot give it away to anybody else. You need to spend it selfishly on yourself for your family. Yes, but no charities, no one outside your immediate circle. How comfortable are you with that limitation? Let's say that you're completely comfortable with it. Oh, Daniel, I could spend a million dollars on myself and not blink an eye. How about 10 million? You, have, you now have $10 million in your possession and you're to spend it all on yourself. You can buy investments. You can invest it in different ways that will benefit you, but they must benefit you directly. Another question in this belief and mindset realm is, am I open to receiving abundance and positive experiences? Am I a skeptic? When these things show up, do I expect this shoe to drop, you know, something to be taken away? Do I have deservability issues? Is my knee-jerk response, this is too good to be true? Well, that indicates that there is a level of fear there about life and that the universe is actually there to support you. Another question is, am I constantly focused on what's lacking or what could go wrong? Is that focus holding me back from moving forward? What if everything was going to go right? What if it all worked out? Does that change things? Again, these questions are going to point to where you might be closed off to receiving 
where you may not be open to receiving. Second realm to look at is your emotional state. Do I often feel anxious? Do I feel fear? Am I stressed or overwhelmed as I move through life? Am I trusting the flow of the universe? Am I resistant to change and new opportunities? Am I mired so much in the way things currently are that I'm unwilling to release what I have in order to take in something even more? Another question is, do I frequently experience negative emotions such as jealousy, resentment, or self-doubt? That's kind of human, but how frequently does that happen? Does it happen more often than not? And then the last question in this portion is, am I able to genuinely feel and express gratitude for what I currently have? Or am I caught up thinking about the things that I don't have? Am I more consumed with what's not working and I'm not able to focus on the blessings that I currently enjoy. Section three is control and resistance. And this has a lot to do with fear. Fear about the flow of life, fear about the support of the universe, not trusting the universe. Do I have a strong need to control or micromanage outcomes? This, a lot of people excuse this with being a perfectionist. Well, it's based in fear. And the idea that you need to be serious about life. You need to get, you know, like important things require a degree of seriousness. Now, if you ask me, and I could be wrong, but the only thing that I feel you should be serious about is having serious fun. I think you can have fun doing important things. When we're serious, when we get really serious about doing the work at hand, we're actually wound up too tight. We're not willing to fail. We're not open to making mistakes. And that's typically when mistakes do happen. And this leads me right into the second question. Am I resistant to letting go of expectations and surrendering to the flow of life? Now, there's a lot there. Am I resistant to letting go of expectations? And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. The Buddha says this, and I'm quoting the Buddha. Of course, I'm quoting the Buddha. The source of all our suffering comes from our attachments, our attachments to our expectations. It's being unwilling to accept things as they show up. We're constantly in this dialogue in our head. It should have or could have happened this other way. But it didn't. But it could have. It should have had. It, and, but it didn't. And so we're, we're right back and forth. We have this expectation or this idea that if only it had happened this way, then everything would be fine. But it didn't happen this way. And so we're faced with the, the truth of it again. It didn't happen that way. And that is the suffering, the resistance to accepting things as they are. Now, I need to say this about expectation. It's important to have an expectation that the universe will show up, that will support you. But if it doesn't happen exactly the way you think it should, you can release that, but still have the expectation, the idea, the anticipation that the universe will show up in a different way, just not in the way that you expected. So we want expectations, but we don't want to be tied to those expectations. The next question is, do I struggle with accepting and embracing uncertainty? Am I comfortable with ambiguity? Now, this is actually a trait of top-level CEOs, leaders of huge organizations. They have to have a comfortableness with ambiguity. Because frankly, when you're in that position, there's a lot of things that are moving, a lot of gears and mechanisms working within your business that you don't have any idea about what's going on. So there's a, a certain level of ambiguity, just like with the universe. You don't know all the things that are going on behind the scenes, behind the curtains to make things happen for you. And so you need to have a certain amount of comfortableness with the ambiguity that you don't have all the facts. You don't have all the details. You're just going to allow it to happen. <sighs> You're not going to be an active ingredient. Well, you are because you created the intention. You set things in motion, but the universe is actually doing all the heavy lifting. Your other than conscious mind is doing all the heavy work. And then there's the next checkpoint, the next 
self-inventory question, which is something that I used to have a lot of issue with, a lot of trouble with. Am I open to receiving support and assistance from others? Are you open to receiving support and assistance from others? Or are you like, I got to do it on my own. I can do it by myself. I can figure it out. I can't say or indicate to other people, I don't know what I'm talking about. They'll think I'm stupid. And then sometimes there's an aspect of deservability in this. I don't deserve assistance. I don't deserve help from somebody else. That reminds me of a story I heard one time, and I'll probably tell it differently than you've heard it before, but this guy was hiking in wilderness, and he slipped and fell over the side of a cliff, but he was able to hang on, and he did not fall to his death, but he didn't have the strength to pull himself up, and he wasn't necessarily a believer in God, but he began praying, oh God, help me, if you help me, then I'll be your servant for life. And as soon as he uttered the request, he heard the words, I will save you, my son. God spoke to him. And so in about five minutes, there were a couple hikers came by, heard him over the side, and they lowered a rope and said, grab the rope, we'll pull you up. And he said, no, thank you. God said he'd save me. The hiker said, are you sure? If you don't come up now, you'll probably fall. No, no, no. You can go on your way. God said he'd save me. Well, search and rescue found him. The hikers informed them, the rangers, and they came with a rope and lowered it down. And he refused it. He said, no bother. God's going to save me. Well, they sent a helicopter in because he slipped down to another level. They couldn't reach him with the rope. And they sent a helicopter in with a ladder and they lowered down a basket. And he waved it off. He called them off and said, God's going to save me. Well, it wasn't shortly after that he slipped and fell to his death. And when he appeared in heaven before God, he said, God, what happened? You said you're going to save me. I did. I sent you some hikers. I sent you search and rescue. I sent you a helicopter and you waved them all off. You think I'm going to come myself? And that tells me that the universe will support you. God, God is all that is, will support you. Just not necessarily in the way that you expect them to. The next section I have on this checklist is about self-reflection. Do I regularly take time for self-reflection and introspection? Do I consider myself important enough to self-reflect? What is my level of awareness? Am I aware of my thoughts, my emotions, and my patterns of behavior? Am I able to look at these from a witness perspective so I can assess how I'm doing? The next section I have here is, do I practice self-care and prioritize my well-being? Like, do I take time for myself? Do I reward myself? Do I take care of myself, nurture myself, take long baths? Do I invest in myself? Do I buy myself nice things? Do I, you know, treat myself to nice things? Next, am I willing to confront and release past hurts and negative experiences? Am I willing to engage in these and heal them? Or do I try and push them aside, push them down and pretend they never happened? Pretend that I can rise above it. Well, those aspects are really calling to be addressed, to be acknowledged, to be healed. Because in the absence of healing, those experiences, those past hurts become blocks to you receiving. I've always known this on some level, but in the last three months in working with people on a deeper level in the subpersonalities, a lot of these subpersonalities are there because they've been hurt, they've been rejected, they've been left behind, and they actually get in the way. Those are the aspects that are fearful. Those are the aspects that are quote-unquote self-sabotaging. They're not really self-sabotaging. They're trying to look out for you, but they're stuck. They're stuck in the past. And so these aspects need to be drawn out and healed and reintegrated into the whole. Section five of the self-inventory is gratitude and appreciation. Do I consciously practice gratitude and appreciate the blessings in my life? Am I able to recognize and acknowledge the positive aspects of each day? And again, I've talked about this before, that to really engage the appreciation and the gratitude in your life, a lot of times you need to lower the bar way down. And the fact that you got up, 
was a blessing. The fact that you were able to dress yourself, walk by yourself, feed yourself, that's a blessing. That you actually had food to put in your belly, that's a blessing. Are you able to recognize and acknowledge the blessings in your everyday life? Do I express gratitude to others and show appreciation for their contributions? Am I willing to acknowledge others or do I only want to be acknowledged? I actually look for people to acknowledge. Everyone wants to be acknowledged for something. Everyone. If you can find the thing that they want to be acknowledged for, the thing that nobody else sees and you point it out, that is a gift. And then lastly here, am I open to receiving compliments, kindness, and acts of generosity? Can I receive it with no feeling or compulsion that I must compliment the other person? If someone says they like my shirt or like how I look, I look really sharp. So do you. You look marvelous yourself. No. If someone compliments you, you say, thank you for noticing. End of it. Don't compliment them back. They know you never meant to compliment them. That if you they hadn't complimented you, you would have not complimented them. Maybe you would, but chances are you wouldn't have. So if someone gives you a compliment, you just say thank you. Thank you for noticing. I appreciate you noticing. If that idea makes you uncomfortable, like saying thank you, thanks for noticing, if that makes you feel uncomfortable, practice saying it to the extreme. Imagine someone complimenting you and you say this, damn right, I look fantastic. I put a lot of work into this. Frankly, I'm surprised a lot more people haven't noticed or haven't said anything. They're probably silently jealous and they just can't muster up the courage or the, the will to say anything nice to me. I got it going on and you're the only one that had the courage to say anything. That's a feather in your cap. Obviously, that's a little over the top. But if you can go over the top in, in your mind, then for you to just simply say, thank you for noticing, I appreciate it. That's a lot easier to say especially when you practice the extreme on the other end. And again, only do that if you have trouble saying thank you for noticing. For some people, that seems smug and prideful to say. And that's, you know, if that's the way it's coming up for you, then that's a block to you receiving. Practice going to the extreme. Practice being over the top and then just saying thank you for noticing becomes really easy. Section six on my self-inventory is your degree of open-mindedness. Am I open to new ideas, perspectives, and experiences? Or am I rigidly attached to old forms, old ideas, old ways of doing things? Do I actively seek out opportunities for growth and learning? This question in particular points to the growth mindset. When you're invested in growth, when you're invested in expanding and learning, then you are naturally open. You're, you're looking towards possibility. You're not tied to the fixed mindset, the idea that there's only so much to go around and you better grab what you can or hang on to what you can in this moment or you're not going to have anything. The growth mindset is the abundance mindset, which means that there is more than enough to go around. Am I willing or do I listen attentively to others without judgment or preconceived notions? Do I accept their point of view as their point of view, not tied to me? I don't need to defend it. I don't need to tear it down. I can just let them say it and leave it hanging out in space. That is the ultimate respect. Am I open for there to be multiple points of view about any given subject? Or do I feel like I have to express the fact that I'm right and I know what's going on? Last question in this section is, am I willing to explore alternative paths or solutions to challenges? Am I an option thinker? Do I look for possible alternatives? Am I a possibility thinker? Or do I get stuck in the idea that there was only one way to do this and if it didn't work, I guess we're screwed. The last section of this self-inventory is self-love and acceptance. These are the questions. Do I practice self-love and self-care regularly? Am I gentle with myself? Do, am I forgiving and compassionate with myself? Am I willing to be forgiving 
towards myself for behavior that was less than stellar. Next question. Do I prioritize my needs and honor my boundaries? Am I willing to say no to people? Can I say no and not feel guilty? Do I consider my point of view, my expression in life, important enough to take a stand for? Or am I willing to acquiesce to other people's priorities, other people's ideas, and other people's demands, even when it flies in the face of my own needs? You need to take a stand for yourself. The last question in the self-inventory is, am I able to acknowledge and celebrate my strengths and accomplishments? That's it. That's my self-inventory. You see, a lot of people automatically say that they're open to receive, but when they really drill down, really start asking the questions, they see that they have some barriers to receiving. I have had barriers to receiving. I thought I was completely open to receive a lot, receive money, receive help, receive, you know, abundance in all different kinds of forms. But it wasn't until I began self-reflecting because things weren't coming in. When things aren't coming in and you've been creating intentions, You have to ask, am I really open to receive? How am I blocking my abundance? Well, I just gave you a whole list of questions that I've used on myself, that I've used with clients. And you can get this list by downloading the five steps to manifesting. And if you've already done that, expect an email where I give you a bonus, the self-inventory on your openness to receive. And so if you haven't yet signed up to receive the five steps to manifesting, sign up for that either through the show notes here or go to yesdaniel.com and follow the link. And then I will send this list, this self-inventory, this checklist of questions to ask to identify your openness to receive. That will be a follow-up bonus within a day or two. So since we're talking about openness to receive, I'm open to receive your five-star reviews. If you haven't yet reviewed the podcast on whichever app that you listen to, it is most easiest to leave a review on Apple Podcasts. And the majority of people do listen on Apple, but not everybody. There's a lot of people that listen on Spotify, and they don't have the ability to leave reviews on Spotify. There's also Stitcher and Pandora and at Audible, and there, there's lots of other places, but not all of them do you have the ability to leave a review. But where you can, please leave a review. I really appreciate it. And it does make it easier for other people to find the podcast. And somehow these reviews factor in the rating system on how, quote unquote, popular the podcast is, which raises it up in the suggestions for other people to find. Just makes it easier easier for those people actually looking for this information to find it. And I appreciate and I'm open to your assistance in making that happen. Well, until next time, this is your friend and host, Daniel Danovi, urging you to follow your bliss. Live your life from inner signals. Be inner directed as you engage in the epic adventure. (laughs) 